Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about proving trig functions. Now, when you're proving trigonometric functions, oftentimes you're gonna end up using a few things such as Pythagorean identities, or actually any kind of identities or definitions that go along with the uh, trig functions. So, uh, depending on what it is that you're asked to prove, here's a couple of things to consider. As we talked about just now, one of the things you might want to consider is the use of Pythagorean identities to help prove trig functions. Now, here's just a couple of them to uh, consider. One of the ones that you'll find you'll use quite a bit of is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. That's probably one of the more frequently used Pythagorean identities. Now there's a couple of other ones, such as one plus tangent squared theta of the angle, which is equal to secant squared theta, as well as one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. Now, in addition to these identities, you may be asked to use some reciprocal um, functions. For example, you may be, when it comes to proving trig functions, you may be asked to use the fact that secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta, or cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. Now these are just a couple of demonstrations, but you might ask to use what sine and cosine are in terms of reciprocal. So for example, cosine theta, you might be asked to use the fact that it's one over secant theta, and similarly, that sine theta is one over cosecant theta. So depending on what it is that you're trying to prove, you may be asked to use the various uh, Pythagorean identities or, or reciprocal uh, definitions. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and there are a few tips on proving trick functions.